Welcome to the Money Love Podcast. I'm your host and money coach, Paige Pritchard. If you're ready to uplevel your results in relationship with money, you're in the right place. Each week, I give you the tools to transform your mindset, manage your emotions, and achieve results with your money you never dreamed were possible. Hi, love. Welcome to episode 20 of the Money Love Podcast. Today, or at least the day that this episode is dropping, is December 1st, 2020. And I just have to say, I'm sitting here looking at the calendar in disbelief. I cannot believe that we are in the last month of 2020. I mean, part of me just wants to take a deep breath, but then the other part of me, like I said, is just in disbelief that 2020 is almost over. So I hope all of you had just an amazing Thanksgiving and you guys are ready to kind of ramp up the holiday season. And I am so excited to dive into today's topic because, first of all, I feel like it's something that a lot of us, including myself, struggle with when it comes to our money and our finances, but I feel like it's especially heightened this time of year. Like I said, myself included is that this month is kind of the month where we just throw all the rules out the window. We're like, it's December, screw it. I'm going to drink what I want. I'm going to eat what I want. I'm going to spend what I want. And all of the self-discipline just goes out the window. So I figured there is not a better time for us to talk about this concept of self-discipline. So when it comes to managing our money, one of the biggest and most detrimental lies that we tell ourselves is the lie that, quote, I'm not disciplined. And I hear it from you guys all the time. It's one of the biggest excuses that you tell me that you feel is why you cannot be successful with so many different components of your finances and of your life, really. And it's a belief truly that is sabotaging your financial future in so many ways. So that's what we're going to break down today. So let's just start with defining self-discipline. What does it really mean? So I went on Google to see what Google says. And according to Google, self-discipline is, and I actually really love this definition, but Google says that self-discipline is the ability to pursue what one thinks is right despite temptations to abandon it. So I'll say that again, the ability to pursue what one thinks is right despite temptations to abandon it. Now, I think of self-discipline as your ability to have self-control or self-restraint against your base primitive desires. So if it was up to just our lizard survival brains, most of us would lay in bed until noon every day. We'd eat whatever we want. We'd drink whatever we want. If we didn't feel like going to work, we just wouldn't go to work, right? But of course, every single one of us wakes up every day, most of us not doing those things, right? We go to work. We get up at a decent hour. We eat relatively well. And that's the whole idea of discipline is our ability to kind of overcome those base desires that we have. Now, where I want to start with this is I want to just dive into a couple misconceptions about self-discipline. So the first misconception about discipline is that discipline is something that is fixed, it's finite, or it's predetermined within you. So when you guys are describing your level of discipline to me, You tell it to me like you're telling me the color of your hair or the color of your eyes, right? You state that you have no discipline, like you were just born that way. You tell me like, oh, I'm just not a disciplined person. And what I want to offer to you is that it actually has been scientifically proven that self-discipline or willpower is something that we can absolutely improve on and grow. So instead of it being like a fixed personality trait or a genetic trait, It's actually like a muscle that we can exercise and grow stronger. And the more willpower, the more restraint, the more self-control we have, the more discipline we have, right? So the first challenge that I want to make to you is to stop carrying the belief that you are not a disciplined person. I want you to really ask yourself how that belief or how that self-identity is serving you in any positive or productive way? And when you think about that question, I don't really think that you're going to find an answer that you like. Because my opinion is, is that I don't think that carrying the belief that you're an undisciplined person helps or serves you in any positive way. Being undisciplined is not a badge and it's not an identity that you have to believe about yourself. Because listen, when you know the model, right, the model is the C-T-F-A-R, 
you can clearly see that a thought or belief of I'm not disciplined or I'm just not a disciplined person, that is going to create the feeling or emotion within you of undisciplined, which is going to lead to undisciplined behaviors, which is going to create not so stellar results in any area of your life. And so that belief, that identity that you have about yourself really just becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. You have the belief that you're not disciplined, you feel undisciplined, you take undisciplined actions, which is just providing your brain with further evidence that you're not disciplined, and it just becomes this loop that strengthens over time. So until you choose to address the root cause of your undisciplined actions, which is the belief about yourself that you're an undisciplined person, you're never going to be able to break that loop. So I want you to work on a couple thoughts, and I want you to work on adopting beliefs about yourself like, I am a disciplined person. I do what I say I'm going to do. I honor the commitments that I make to myself. Do you see how much better those feel even just thinking them than the thought, I'm not a disciplined person, or I can never follow through on things? You have to start with that identity that you have about yourself and just working to take on the identity of a disciplined person. So that's the first misconception that I wanted to point out to you is that disciplined is not a genetic personality trait. You do not come into the world out of the womb either being disciplined or undisciplined. In fact, it's something that you work to build and strengthen over time. And so when we know that, then we can take on any identity that we want to when it comes to being self-disciplined. So now that we know that discipline isn't something that you are or you aren't, but rather it's a skill that you grow and develop, the second misconception that I want to debunk is that self-discipline eliminates freedom in your life. This is a really big one. So when a lot of people think of living a life of self-discipline, a lot of thoughts come up. And here's some common ones that I hear from you guys. I hear things a lot like, well, I just want to be able to do what I want to do when I want to do it. I also hear a lot like, I don't want to feel restricted. I don't want to feel controlled. I also hear like, I want options. I want freedom. So what we're doing is we're saying that self-discipline is the opposing force to these things. It's something that's going to control us. It's something that's going to stick us in a corner. It's something that's going to make us do things that we don't want to be doing. And for a lot of us, self-discipline has a very negative connotation surrounding it. And so, of course, when we view being self-disciplined in this way, obviously we're not going to want to be self-disciplined. When we make the correlation in our brains to more discipline equals less freedom, then obviously being self-disciplined is not something that our brains are going to be very motivated to make happen. But here's what I want to offer you on this point is that I believe that self-discipline is the ultimate act of freedom and control, especially with money. So let's think about this. I mean, one very obvious example that I hear when it comes to self-discipline and money is budgeting. People don't want to budget because they don't want to feel restricted or confined by a plan. But like we've talked about in a past episode, budgeting isn't not spending money. In fact, it's quite the opposite. What budgeting is, is making a plan ahead of time of how you're going to spend your money and then just going out and executing that plan. And so sticking to that plan and following through on it, I want you to see that you absolutely do not have less freedom. In fact, you have way more freedom, especially in the longer term. Because when you're disciplined with money, It means that you're consistently putting money away, you're not impulsively spending it, you're sticking to your spending plan, which in turn gives you so much more freedom. Because when you're doing all those things, you're financially prepared. You have money when emergencies pop up, you have the freedom to say yes to the things that you want to say yes to and no to the things that you want to say no to. You're not tied to an unhealthy or a toxic work environment or relationship because you can't afford to go anywhere else. You're going to have more money longer term to travel, to explore, to work when you want to work, to not work when you don't want to work. I mean, the options are endless, right? And even though a lot of people want to turn away from self-discipline as a concept when it comes to your money, 
I just want to invite you to embrace the fact that discipline is the very secret to your freedom and also to your success with money. More self-discipline leads to more wealth, and more wealth leads to more freedom. Therefore, the more disciplined that you are in this moment today with your finances, the more freedom, the more control, and the more options you're creating for yourself down the road moving forward. Now, those two are the biggest misconceptions about self-discipline that I wanted to debunk for you, that it's something that's fixed and also that it's something that leads to less freedom in your life. So moving forward, I want you to remind yourself, I want you to say, I choose to be a disciplined person because the more disciplined I am, the more wealth and freedom I create for myself. Having that belief about self-discipline will make it something that you actually want to do because you can see the benefit that it provides into your life. Now, I want to touch on a couple other things that are more on the tactical side because by now you might be thinking like, yes, okay, got it, see your points. I totally understand how important it is. I want to be more disciplined. But the next question your brain is going to offer you is how. How do I find or cultivate self-discipline in my life, especially when it comes to my money? So I'm going to give you my two biggest pieces of advice in this area. Both of these are things that I have done myself. They've worked incredibly well for me, but I just want to be clear that these are longer term solutions. These are not things that you're going to just be able to implement and immediately see a complete 180 in terms of self-discipline. So here's the first thing, and this is the longer term solution. Becoming a disciplined person with your finances starts with an identity shift. It's a person that you have to become. A lot of people, when they're focused on becoming more disciplined, they are focused on all the tips and the hacks and the systems to keep them disciplined. And while yes, those things will help you to an extent, if you don't change your mindset and you don't change your identity, none of the tips or the systems or the planners are going to matter at all. So here's what I mean by that. I want to ask you, do you have expectations of yourself when it comes to managing your finances? Now, this might seem a little confusing at first, so let me explain to you what I mean by this. You probably have a lot of rules or expectations that you've put on yourself or put into your life, either intentionally or unintentionally, that you may or may not even realize are there. So for instance, in your life, you might have an expectation of yourself that you show up to work on time, that you go to bed by 11 p.m. every night, that you don't do drugs. Some of you might have expectations or rules that you've put in your life around food, right? Maybe you're a vegetarian, so you have a rule that you don't eat meat. So we have these rules and expectations that we've put into our life to protect our emotions, to protect our health, to protect our time. But I want to ask you, do you have similar rules or expectations of yourself when it comes to your money and your finances? And what I find is that many of us don't. So I'll tell you a couple that I have for me, so this might make a little more sense. An expectation that I have of myself when it comes to money is that I do not spend money that I don't have. Another expectation that I have of myself with money is that I always pay myself first. Another one is that I check in with my money for 60 seconds every day. So when I think about these things, here's what I mean. I say, I am someone who blank. I am someone who doesn't spend money that I don't have. I am someone who at all times has a plan for my money. I am someone who checks in with my money every day for 60 seconds. These aren't just things that I do. These are the type of person that I am. Just like how you would say, like, I'm a vegetarian or I'm a non-smoker. This is the identity that you have for yourself when it comes to your money and your finances and how you manage it and take care of your money. Self-discipline is an identity that you take on. And the deeper and more reinforced that identity becomes within you, the less willpower it's going to take for you to actually follow through on the actions that contribute to that identity. So I want you to think about this. So for me, this is just a very clear and obvious example for me. I identify as a non-smoker. I don't smoke, and I have no judgment for anyone who does. It's just my personal choice. I am a non-smoker. 
I don't smoke cigarettes. I don't vape. I don't smoke weed. I don't smoke anything. It's just part of my identity that I've chosen to take on. I don't care how many times somebody offers it to me. I don't care where I am. I don't care who else is doing it. I don't care anything. I'm just never going to do it. And so if I'm in a situation where somebody offers me something to smoke, I'm not in a position where I'm having to actively make a decision on if I'm going to smoke it or not, because it's already been decided. I have a very clean discipline about that. I don't have to spend a lot of time wasting decision-making energy on whether or not I'm going to smoke something because I've already decided that for myself. The same becomes true when you take on the identity of someone who doesn't spend money that you don't have. We actually only have a limited amount of willpower. But once something is adopted to be a part of your identity, it takes a lot less willpower for you to make that decision. So the amount of willpower that it takes for me to not spend money that I don't have is now very little because it's a huge part of my own self-belief about myself. So that's what I mean about making self-discipline a part of your identity. You have to hold that belief about yourself, and you have to have those expectations of yourself ahead of time. You be the one to let yourself know the rules and the guidelines that go on in your own life. And when you can practice this, then exercising self-discipline with your finances is going to be something that becomes as reinforced and as easy and natural and automatic as the self-discipline that you have to brush your teeth every day or to show up to work on time. It's not just something that you do. You do it because of the type of person that you are. Now, the next step is actually practicing this self-control because practicing it is what makes it stronger. Remember, this is all a loop. So the belief leads to the actions, and then the actions over time are going to reinforce the belief and the identity, which makes it stronger and stronger. I'm going to keep reminding you of this point. Discipline is a muscle, which means it's something that has to be developed over a period of time. You're not going to go from a scrawny little stick to a jacked bodybuilder in a week. When we think about the process of actually building up a muscle, like an actual muscle in our human body, We know that it's a process that takes time and work and commitment. So just know that this practice of building up and strengthening your self-discipline, it can take months, it can take years. But remember, there is never any rush. So I'll tell you for me, personally, my personal journey, my journey to self-discipline has been a journey that has spanned at least a couple of years. When I think of self-disciplined, in my mind, I go back to the year of 2018. So 2018 was actually the year that I moved from Michigan to Houston, and it was by far the most undisciplined year of my entire life. I went from working in a big office, getting up every day, commuting into my job, to essentially working at home all day, every day by myself. The discipline that I had around sleep, around eating, around drinking, around exercising, around spending money, all went out the window. I mean, there basically was no self-discipline in my life. I gained close to 50 pounds in a year. I was drinking, you know, a considerable amount of wine, I would say five to six nights a week. I was not exercising. We were spending a ton of money. I wasn't checking in with my money. It was just honestly a disaster. And so when I came into 2019, you know how everyone has like words for the year. My year for 2019 was discipline. I knew that I had to regain control of my life. But I want you to know that I didn't come into 2019 saying, okay, I'm going to make a complete 180. What I did was I started small. And that is always where you have to start with self-discipline. Now, I'll tell you the result of that. Two years later, again, it's been a process and a journey that has spanned years. But two years later, my life looks completely different. I've lost all the weight. I don't really drink much anymore. I drink socially, but I don't really just like drink in my house during the week. I'm exercising consistently. I check in with my money every day. I'm growing my business. But that all started with just a very small decision to practice discipline and constraint in one area of my life. So that is what I want to encourage for you as well. 
the best place to start with cultivating self-discipline is to set a minimum baseline. So a minimum baseline is basically the least amount of anything that you're willing to do. So with your finances, if you're not checking in with your money at all right now, you could just say, okay, I'm just going to start with checking my bank account for one minute every week. A minimum baseline should be something that is ridiculously easy to do. Something that you know is realistic and something that you know that you can start with and that you will do. So right now, if you're racking up purchases on a credit card that you know you don't have the money to pay back, your minimum baseline could be, I'm just going to not use my credit card for one day. I'm not going to use my credit card tomorrow. It could be something like, I'm going to save a dollar a day for the next five days to save $5 total. Now, here's why we do this. The point with a minimum baseline is to set something that you know that you can do and that you know that you can commit to. The deal with minimum baselines is that they aren't really even about the result that you're producing externally, but they're more about the result that they produce within you internally. It's more about creating a goal or an action that you know that you can take than going out and taking that action and then proving to yourself that you are someone who does what they say they're going to do. Because when you can set a minimum baseline and follow through on it, suddenly you actually start following through on them just for the sake of doing what you said that you were going to do, which is going to switch the emphasis from doing it because of what it will do for you, meaning what result will this action provide me, to I'm doing this thing for me. It really does change everything. A minimum baseline is a great first step that can create an internally controlled and motivated environment in you versus an externally controlled and motivated environment. And that is the mental shift that we need in order to be committed to any type of change in our life. So what I want to challenge you to do from this episode is I want you to set one financially driven minimum baseline for yourself. So decide what that is and then set yourself up so that there is no option not to follow through. You make that commitment 100% no matter what you are doing it. And when you shake on that commitment to yourself, it should be as if you're shaking on that commitment to somebody else that you really genuinely care about, that really matters to you. And here's the benefit of doing that. The more you set up all of your decisions ahead of time, the less reactive you're going to be in the moment, the less temptations that you're going to have to deal with. Like going back to our example, if you can decide ahead of time that you will not smoke cigarettes, then you're not very likely to be tempted by them. There won't be any negotiation with yourself if you're offered by somebody to smoke a cigarette. It's just not an option. And really, like I said, that is freedom. It frees up your brain and your mental energy because having that game plan ahead of time lets you use a lot less willpower in the moment. The more that you use your discipline and you honor your discipline, the more willpower, the more restraint, the more successful you're going to get at having self-discipline. When you can honor that decision to yourself, you get better at it. You've practiced it. And here's the beautiful thing. Once you do it in one area of your life, you get better at doing it in all areas of your life. A rising tide lifts all ships. So let's say you wanted to start with exercise. If you're more disciplined because you're exercising every day, then you're going to be more disciplined to eat better, which means you're going to be more disciplined of not spending so much money eating out. Discipline in one area of your life applies to discipline in every area of your life. But like I said, the trick is to just start small. So I want you to start with your minimum baseline. Start with something with your finances that you know that you can do and then go out and do it. Build that belief up in yourself that you are someone who does what they say they are going to do. And as that belief in yourself and that identity strengthens, you can start doing more and more. You'll find that you'll start checking in with your money once a week and then a couple times a week and then every day. Not because it's something that you're obligated to do, but again, it's because it's who you are. I'm telling you, I cannot emphasize how powerful this has been in my own life, especially within the past two years. Just planning my decisions ahead of time, really eliminating the need for any type of negotiation in my world, following through and honoring 
my commitment to myself has made my discipline, my willpower, my self-control so much stronger. But the best part about it, honestly, is that it has also improved the relationship that I have with myself. So I highly encourage you to try this, to set a minimum baseline for yourself with your finances. Make some disciplined rules for your money that you want to follow through on and then honor those decisions by shaking on it with yourself and following through. Because the more you honor your commitments to yourself, no matter how small they are, the stronger your discipline is going to become and the easier it's going to get and the more natural it's going to feel to you. All right, I want to close this out with this one last point. You have to remember that the success that you experience in any area of life, okay, with your health, your relationship, especially your finances, all it is is just a series of small daily disciplines that compound and build over time. So often we're not disciplined and we don't offer those small daily commitments that we make to ourselves because our survival short-term brains want to convince us that none of that stuff really matters and that it's not going to make a difference. And so we figure like, oh, well, does it matter? I'm not going to do it. But that's how we create massive change and massive results in your life is by showing up and honoring those small daily disciplines that you've agreed to. So you guys know I love reading passages to you. So I want to close this out with a passage from the book, The Slight Edge by Jeff Olson. This is probably my favorite personal development book ever. So if you're looking for just a really amazing personal development book to start with, I always recommend The Slight Edge. So here is what he has to say about the small daily disciplines. He says, the difference between success and failure is not dramatic. In fact, the difference between success and failure is so subtle, so mundane, that most people miss it. They may not realize that they have a philosophy, but they do. And it goes like this. What I do right now doesn't really matter. It's not hard to see how people come to this understanding of life. I don't blame them. It's completely understandable, but it's just not the truth. Because the truth is what you do matters. What you do today matters. What you do every day matters. Successful people are those who understand that it's the little choices they make that matter. And because of that, they choose to do the things that seem to make no difference at all in the act of doing them. And they do them over and over and over until the compound effect kicks in. Those little things that will make you successful in life, that will secure your health, your happiness, your fulfillment, your dreams are simple, subtle, mundane things that nobody will see, nobody will applaud, nobody will even notice. They are those things that at the time that you do them, they often feel like they make no difference at all. They are ridiculously easy to do, but they are just as easy not to do. They are things that don't seem to bring you any visible results at first. They are things that seem so insignificant, they couldn't possibly matter, but they do. Things that when you look at them as single occurrences don't seem like they have any impact at all, yet when compounded over time, they add up to outrageous success. All right, so here are the things that I want to leave you with on this episode about building financial self-discipline. Remember, self-discipline is an identity, so take it on. There is no reason not to. And taking on the opposite identity of being an undisciplined person is one of the most detrimental identities to take on with your finances and honestly with your life. The stronger that we can make your identity of being a disciplined person, the easier it's going to become to do the things that you say that you're going to do and the less willpower you're going to need to do them. I want you to remember that more discipline leads to more wealth, which leads to more freedom. And we start this process by starting small. Set a minimum baseline for yourself. Write down something that you are going to do this week with your finances that you know that you can do. Whether it's just saving $1, whether it's just pulling up your checking account and glancing through it, whether it's paying an overdue bill, it can be anything. But once you've written it down, then go out and do it. And as you're doing it, remind yourself that I am someone who does what they say they're going to do. All right, you guys, I love you all so much. 
Have an amazing week and I will see you next Tuesday. Thanks for listening to this week's episode of the Money Love Podcast. If you're loving the podcast, then I want to invite you to join me in the Overcoming Overspending membership. It's where we take this work deeper and apply the concepts and coaching from each week's episode into your own life. By being a member, you have exclusive access to my Overcoming Overspending process, 10 monthly live coaching calls with me, a private podcast, members-only community, monthly money topic and challenge, bonus courses, and so much more. There's nowhere else like it out there to level up your finances and life. Simply go to overcomingoverspending.com to join and you can enter in the code MLP30 at checkout to save $30 on your first month inside the membership. See you inside.